food. Oh. You done? Pretty young, sorry. You done? Yep. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. What up? What is up? Not much. We're back. Here on a Sunday more weekend. We're here on a holiday weekend. Still getting it done. Charles is is with me. Right here sitting next to me. Joining in on the podcast fun. We already took them on their walk. We got our obligation done. Let me get myself situated here. So we're going to talk about Jeez, why are you like, getting right into it? Right into it. Um, I'm actually wanted to just talk about cheat day. It was good. I always like to recap cheat day. It was delicious. Your burrito, smacking, Bloody. cookies. Oh, oh yeah, boy. Alyssa came back from Hawaii and brought cookies. Go ahead, recap it. Well, we had um, you. Well, I was gonna have ice cream and I wasn't gonna have donuts, but you decided to go get donuts. I did. So that kind of threw me off. So I didn't have ice cream. I just had half an apple fritter. That's it. So I had half an apple fritter. And um, Tyler and I had acai bowls. Mm. So good. Now I have one. Just so good. And I like the acai bowls at like Vitality Bowls or Press Juicery because they don't add a bunch of like added sugar. It's just fruit and acai. It's got a lot of micronutrients and antioxidants. The ones at Jamba Juice, they have they have a lot of sugar. A ton of sugar. They and add a lot sugar. of added sugar. So not just from the fruit. Because you're yeah. going to get a lot of sugar, you know, from the fruit, but... Um, There's no reason to add extra. Oh, but I love it. a good acai bowl. Honestly, Me too, I don't even have to wait for a cheat day to have one. I can get I can get a, a good quality acai bowl into my macros, like from Press Juicery. Where's Press Juicery? There's one at Santana Row. Oh. Yeah, so I actually might want to get one of their... They have also um, oh, sounds good. something called a free... Right. Yeah, like it's. I'm gonna go get one now if it is. Doesn't it sound good? <laughs> now you're talking about it. Yeah. It sounds so good to press juice. What's good for after cheat too? You know, clean your, everything out. Oh, you clean everything out. You like mean, you know, all the cheap food, the bad <laughs> heavy food. I had, I had chips, a burrito. I had a burger last night. Yeah, too. you had a burger, but I didn't. I had a burrito, um, the chips and salsa. What else did I have? I had oh, and I'm, I got a, I had a couple of C's chocolates. I wanted mm. to C's because it was right next to Vitality Bowls. So I wanted to see just a couple, but um, yeah, no, it was, it was delicious though. I enjoyed it. Those cookies were good too. Yeah, from Hawaii. I had, because mm -hmm. I wanted to try all of them. So I had just like a, a, a bite, uh, like a kind of like maybe a quarter of each of the cookie yeah. to try all the flavors. Um, it was really good though. It's called the Cookie Company. Is that what it's called, the Cookie Company? Yeah. Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. So that was worth it. Like I always like to say, you know, worth it. I'm mm -hmm. back to, um, I did kind of do, uh, I'm starting a slow reverse diet. And what I mean when I say slow reverse is I'm technically, I'm still in a deficit. So I'm slowly reversing out of a deficit. Mm. Um, because I just, I want to be able to eat more. So usually what I do when I reverse is I just add a little bit more calories. Yeah. Are you awake? Mm -hmm. I'm awake. <laughs> I'm listening to you talk. I, uh, I just add a little bit more calories to my day. Like you know, maybe like 150 or so right now, 100 or so. And then um, have a little bit of a heavier cheat day. So that's what I've been doing. But still, I'm not, I didn't add enough to where it wiped out my deficit. So I'm still losing fat. It's always nice to eat more, right? Feels better, the body. Bump those calories up. I think it's always better. I was actually Makes talking, talking too, to you know? Tyler about that. When you are, um, it's better to eat as much as you can and burn as much as you can. Yeah. Like even when you're trying to create a deficit, it's better to create more of the deficit if you can with more calorie burn with That's maximizing like your burn yep. That's what I like to do. because it's important to get in a lot of food because when you get food in you're getting you know micronutrients macronutrients i think it's easy <clears throat> for people to you know just like oh i want to lose so i want to just cut my food way down mm -hmm. it's it's that's the last thing you want to do. No, better to up your activity. It's better to up your activity. Now, that being said, don't try to like, don't try to 
exercise off a bad meal or exercise off bad food, that doesn't really work because it never quite equates. You'd be shocked like how much it takes, how much exercise it takes to burn off one donut. So yeah. I'm not saying necessarily do that, but it is important if you just, if you're trying to go into a, a loss or create a deficit, don't just automatically cut what you eat first. Think about all the different ways you can increase your calorie burn. Not even with exercise, not even like with an extra workout or an extra cardio session. I mean like the little things add up, right? Just like parking far, yeah. walk into the store, don't park in the front, little things like that. Well, right, like just walk just wherever up. you can. Like even if you yeah. have, if you go get coffee every day, but your coffee shop is a mile or two away, walk it. Walk it sometimes. Walk Why there. Not? Um, or half a mile. Don't drive. Get up in the car and walk. We walk as kids everywhere. Why not? Or Maybe. like walk every time after you eat. That's a good one. Like, Actually, we do that a lot when we go out to eat. We we walk for Helps a while. Helps digestion, and you don't get the uh, the itis as we call. It. You know, you get a food coma. Sit yeah. down, but if you get up and you move after you eat, yeah. and you don't get that. It's weird. Your body's like, all right. Yeah. Me. Yeah. So that's a, that's another way too. But it's important to. And that's why for me, even though I'm, I'm technically, I'm still wanting to lose fat. I'm still in a, um, I, there, of course I, you know, I still have some fat I'd like to lose, but I also don't want to do it by continuing the caloric deficit in terms of the calories I intake. I'm just kind of being more mindful to the calories I burn, trying to burn more. That's better. I think. Because, you know, yeah. So I upped hard, my food hard to cut back yeah. on food. Who who does who wants to cut back? Yeah, like and I just feel like even my clients, like when they're stalled or whatever, it's the last thing. Like I'll really look into everything else and try to pinpoint everything else. And the last thing I'll do is reduce their their calories, just because the more you eat, the more it's important to remember that the more you consume, the more micro and you know, the macro and micronutrients you're getting. And micronutrients are so important. Very true. You need all that. Especially when you're working out hard. Everything adds up. So, um, other than that, it's just been a freaking busy week. Well, last week was so busy. Flew by. It's already Sunday. It's crazy, like. The busier are, it's like, the, like sometimes I have a, like, man, what do the weeks that go by, the days go by? It's like I lost my memory sometimes. Don't you feel like that? Oh, I just it's, felt like that. What were we talking about? Oh, there was a movie. I, I was looking for a movie for us to watch, and mm -hmm. I saw the movie called Airplane with Denzel Washington, and I thought, oh, this is kind of newer. <laughs> we watched it. We saw it in the theaters, but, you know, and I looked at the year that it came out. I was like, I was shocked. I thought it was like a newer movie that we saw maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, three, two, three years ago, maybe? It was, it was nine years ago. Oh, man. <laughs> Remember when he flew the plane upside down? Yeah. And he was a drunk or whatever, yeah. an alcoholic? Mm. But that, that like was yeah. a mind F. I, I thought. He liked that too, so I was like, what? That movie was how long ago? Yeah, that's crazy. It's kind of creepy sometimes. Like, whoa, what are those years? Nine was years. Like, so there was kind of, nine. Did I have amnesia sometimes? Like. Am I living in denial? Like a time warp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so crazy. But um, yeah, it's been busy. It's been busy. And when it's busy, time goes by super fast. Very fast. I've had to really... I can't, You can't ever get everything done almost in a day. No, you know what I started doing actually for time? And it's really helped a lot. Is time blocking my schedule. On and I think I talked about this a little bit last week. I like Elon Musk. I yeah, and that's so funny that you showed me that, that post, right? Mm -hmm. So, but this is what um, I've been doing is I've been allocating a certain amount of time to each task that I need to complete, and I put it in my calendar, and it's kind of eye opening because then you really realize how what you can and can't do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you run out of the time blocks at some point. So, you know, then you have to be a little bit more, okay, what's more important? I can move this to another day. You know, I can try to do this a little faster, but it just is very eye-opening and it's just proof that you can't just wing it. No, nope, you can't. You can't just wing it when you have a lot of things to do. No, nope. because you'll never time get caught up. It. 
Like I noticed that there's people. Explain them what a time block is. Well, so I'll, I'll pull up my calendar and my business day. I like to call my business day 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm usually up before six, but it takes me kind of time to like snap out of it. And um, I like to wind down between six and seven mm -hmm. and eat my dinner and kind of just like watch a show or whatever. So my time blocks are from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I have 12 hours to accomplish everything that I need to, I need to get done. Mm -hmm. So um, I put in, um, I try to guesstimate how much time something is going to take me and I will block off a certain amount of time on my calendar at a specific time where I will work on that task and that task alone. And the cool thing about it is you really focus on one task instead of being all over the place. It allows you to really get like one done. and get it done good. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're focused on one thing. You're not doing three or four things at one time. Yeah. So it, it allows you to be more efficient and you could actually get more done because when you're working on one thing, you get it done, you move on to the next, um, you're just more focused on, you know, getting, getting your stuff done. Yeah. It's so much better. And so I actually had someone ask me, I did like a Q and A on Instagram and I had someone ask me like, how much time do I spend on social media? But like, not cause it's. I mean, unique because a social media is my business. So irregard, I mean, separate from my business, but social media, like personal consumption of social media. Mm -hmm. And so I had to think about that. Like, when do I look at other people's Instagram or whatever? I usually only do it when either like idle time, like I can't be doing something else. Like I'm at an appointment, wait, I'm in a waiting room for an appointment maybe a few minutes before I go to bed, when I'm in bed, a few minutes when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. or the only other time I will do it is like with the time block. So say I gave myself an hour to do, to film a YouTube video or whatever, and I did it in 45 minutes and I have like an extra 15 minutes before I move on to my next task, I'll go sit out on the porch sometimes with the dog and I'll take that time and that's when I'll do social media. Yeah. But it's allowed me to to just do less of it because when I it's realize how valuable my time is, yeah. because hey, I don't have time, I don't have the time block for yeah. that. You know, I don't have it's a luxury. My the space in my calendar is a luxury. I don't wanna like waste that those time spaces with something that is doing me no good. I keep reading that everywhere too. Like don't be just listen, I'm guilty of it too. I look at social media, but I try not to be on it all. I have other things I'm going on training from my phone now, but some people just fucking live on it. Yeah. They, they can't go an hour without, I, so I'll go hours sometimes and I don't even look at it. You know what? And if you find that you, you're one of those people, put your phone in another room on the charger or something. Put mm -hmm. it loud or like, so if there's an emergency or you're worried about that, but get it away from you. Mm -hmm. Because. It is an addicting thing. Yeah. A lot of people are addicted life. to their phones and you spend a lot of time and. When you start to like think about how much time that you're spending on that and what you could be doing when people say like, oh, I'm too busy to work out or I'm too busy to meal prep or I'm too busy. Well, really, because if you added up all that time that you're spending on things that are not benefiting you in any way, then... Um, people might be shocked to find out. They wrote it down and timed themselves every day. Like, okay, I sat down for this long and looked at my social media. I sat down and this and did that. Like, Maybe they need to do that. If you think that you're consuming too much social media, right, pay attention. Yeah. And especially if you are someone that is saying, I don't have time to work out. I I don't have time to you know, like meal prep. I don't have time to do self-care or whatever it may be. Then really take a look. I think that you can find, you'd be shocked as much as I've discovered. There's all excuses. There's always time. I've discovered that. in with my time block system, like now I know why I'm not getting it all done. I have a lot to do and there just isn't enough time in the day. So I have to be a little bit more strategic with my time. But on that same token, you know, people that think they're very busy, if they... A lot of maybe, us pretend busy. Maybe convert, or they think they are. I'm not they saying think, they're pretending. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. But they think they are, but put it down in like, try this system and see, it's just eye-opening. It's eye-opening because you realize there's a lot of wasted time. So 
for example, we were just talking about how, you know, we do our walk in the morning. Yep. And uh, it's a three-mile walk, and it takes us 45 minutes. 45 minutes is not that long. Mm -mm. If we just, if we skipped the walk, for whatever reason, we decided, you know what, this morning, we're not going to go on that walk at 730 we what will happen? What will we get done in that 45 minutes? Unless we're being strategic, unless we're saying, I'm not gonna go on the walk because I need to do this or that or this, a specific task instead. But if you're not being strategic and you just say, you know what, we're just not gonna go on that walk. I'm just still kind of busy today, but you're not gonna be strategic about it. Guess yeah. what? We would have we would sit on the couch for another extra 15 minutes, take an extra 15 minutes to get dressed or whatever and suddenly that 45 minutes passed anyway mm -hmm. and we didn't get the walk done yep it's true and that's how people are about their workouts they'd rather stay on their phone look at it for 45 minutes an hour they could have knocked out a workout if you just Ain't get you. it done like you <clears throat> that thing that you want to do or that thing that you don't want to do that you're trying to make excuses saying that you're too busy to do it doesn't take that long like just do it mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't take that get long earlier, if you just... Get, get up earlier, just strategically plan your day. If the billionaires can do it and work out and, and run their businesses, so can you. So don't, yeah. don't come here thinking like you're busier than The Rock or like Joe Rogan or those guys who, yeah, I mean, who, who train daily, but they also run their multi-million dollar businesses. But I definitely recommend like scheduling your, your life and not just, not just your appointments you and things like that. I mean... Just kind of like plot it all out. Take some time every week to schedule it out. Obviously, like I don't have my entire week scheduled. I have all of the things I already know I need to do this week, appointments or whatever on my calendar. But as things come up, as I think of things, as I get, you know, an email where I'm like, I get a task that I need to complete for like a project I'm working on. Then I open up my calendar and I look and I look at my availability and you can move things around and there's flexibility there. But it is eye-opening and probably increased my productivity by 40%. From just doing that? Just by doing that. That's good. Productivity both personally and professionally. I'm okay. getting more social media content done than I've ever gotten done. If I just tell myself, oh, I just, I need to post on, I need to post on Instagram this week or I need to do a YouTube video this week. Chances are, well, maybe I'll get to it. Maybe I won't. I won't be a con on a consistent schedule or whatever. But if I say, okay, I need to get two YouTube videos done this week. I open up my calendar. These are the days I need to film them. Mm -hmm. There's a time slot for that. Then these are the days I need to edit them. There has to be a time slot for that. It doesn't just magically get edited and uploaded. Yeah. There has to be time slots. So even my social media. So for me, because that's my business... It applies to social media, but for, for you, whatever your business is or whatever the things you're trying to accomplish, that can apply to those things. Yeah, it's true. Because I'm just saying a lot of people, when it comes to like falling off or having a bad week of, of staying on a program or whatever, they usually blame it on, I had a really busy week, I had people in town or whatever. All of that doesn't matter. Like if you know, if you have something going on, then you can just kind of like look at your calendar and you figure out a way to make it work. Yeah, you can always find a way. Yeah, like I have an appointment this week. I have an appointment on Tuesday. So I know, okay, that is going to be my off date from weight. So I have to coordinate with Alyssa. So like, hey, can I take Tuesday off and we'll work out Wednesday, Wednesday instead? So sometimes it requires, you know, some flexibility and moving things around. But because I'm getting in front of it, I'm going to be able to still get it all done. That's true. You're not going to fall behind because your, your time blocks you show me is every time you get it done boom. oh and then I change yeah when I get it done I mark it off so then I can look at my calendar and see like all of the things I got accomplished but then I see maybe there's something you know something maybe did go south a couple days ago and I had something that didn't get done I can easily see that on my calendar and sometimes I can slide that over to another day where I got something done fast or, or whatever mm -hmm. it's just it's been life-changing honestly for me it's good because I used to have my planner and I wrote out all of my must do's and I've talked about my, you know, I've been good at time management. I've always been pretty good at time management, but I just took it up a notch because I used to write everything down, but I didn't do it in specific times. And 
when you write it down in like a planner, I didn't really block off the appropriate amount of time that it was going to take me to accomplish that task. It was more like a to-do list. And this is much more, you know, specific than that. And I find that it's just been, you know, it's helped me quite a bit. So I think that it could be very helpful. I, I definitely recommend trying it out because it's really important to, like I said, not only for professional reasons, but personal, because most of the yeah. time people, like I said, they we have a bad week. It's because they got busy. Mm -hmm. They just automatically, they just got like busy. Like today, if you know you're going to have a busy week, Today's Sunday. If you ain't doing nothing, get your get some of your meals ready for the week, right? Start yeah, I did my meal prep already. You did. I had it on my time block. <laughs> people should, but people should follow suit. Like, if you're gonna be busy, start getting your stuff ready. Yeah. So, like, I meal prep. Usually, I have a routine, and and at the end of the day, it's a routine and a schedule that'll get you through life. It really is. And like, I have a routine that it's like autopilot for me now. Starting usually Thursday is the day I clean out the fridge and start and and look at my what my meal plan is going to be for the next week and I clean out the fridge and kind of get everything all ready and then I'll start to put everything do my grocery shopping on Instacart I'll put all the things I need to order into Instacart but I won't place the order until Friday and then I order the you know I order the groceries on Friday and I put everything away on Friday and then I don't meal prep until Sunday but that's kind of like I've been doing that for that exact routine for a good solid year and yeah, it's just like autopilot can just keep it going Whatever works for you. But so whatever, exactly, everyone's routine and schedule is different, mm -hmm. but it's important that you have a routine and schedule. Yeah. Don't wing it. It's too hard. Like you, you get thrown off. I, I know that I can tell like if your schedule gets messed up, you get thrown off. You like a schedule too. A little bit. I like certain, doing things by a certain time. Yeah. Knocking it out. I'm more of a daytime kind of guy. Knock it out early in the morning. Workouts. Well, you have your, your class too. Yeah. It's like an appointment. Yeah. It's important yeah. too, and it, even if you don't have a personal trainer or you have to work out at a specific time, make an appointment with yourself anyway. Yep. So like Alyssa was out, uh, was in Hawaii, and I knew I was going to struggle because whenever there's a change, like a wrench in my schedule, I struggle a little bit. And so I knew that I was going to struggle, so I scheduled myself on my calendar to go to the gym. Very important you do that. And I did, and I got, I didn't miss any workouts while she was gone. I still Even got a lot of successful people, like billionaires talk about that. Like, listen, they got all the money in the world, but one thing they, that they don't have is they got to put in that work, that workouts. They can't, they can't, you have Nobody to do it. Nobody can do it for you. Nope. Them. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Part of their successful people is part of their uh, secret weapon. It gives them their age, their driving life, working out. The good old gym, whatever it takes to push you and motivate you in life. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important. It's my secret weapon, too. And it, it, it's important for so many different things. But listen, you know what's so weird? Speaking of totally off topic from time management, but I think we covered that pretty well. But yeah. um, I can't believe that there's still such a strong misconception about people think that they can't incorporate a workout routine until they lose the weight they want to lose. As a personal trainer, did you hear that a lot? From the, the people when you were trying they to sell sessions? They, they want to lose weight before they start at working out. Or no, no. Or, or I want to get in shape before I hire a trainer. Oh, oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's the a good one. The whole purpose of getting into shape is why you hire a trainer, you dummy, to teach you the, the necessary steps to get there. You ain't done it on your own already. What makes you think you're ever going to get there? Like, hello? Yeah, like, like no. Like, stop, stop. Let's I don't just, understand the game shape play, before this is, I hire this is play, <laughs> this is this. I don't want to assault people, but they're just, they're delusional. You ain't got there on your own. You need help, okay? Yeah. That's the reason why that person wants to Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You know, why would you need to get shape and coach, get your whatever trainer? Whatever person it takes to beat you there to push you for accountability, yeah. accountability for yeah. i know my clients say the biggest thing for them is they like to do their accountability check-ins every two weeks like that keeps them on point knowing that they have yep to do that like, oh shit i can't fall off the deep water i can't cheat because you can't cheat it yeah Don't it just kind of like if you know it's coming you know you kind of like well you know like and they, know, and they have no life. they've deviated or not they play dumb like why well, come on man you know what? My clients are pretty on point. With they'll, they'll be they're pretty honest about. A lot of people aren't though. They try to lie for what? You're not. You're lying to yourself, not me. Yeah, no. It's they your they kind of were like, listen, this is I'm, I'm, I'm I was about this adherence or this or that. Um, it's your body, it's your life. You know, not me. You're cheating. You're cheating yourself. Yeah, I can only give. I can give the guidance. You can like. What's the saying? Yeah. You can 
can eat a horse, horse to water. But you can't make them drink the no, water. No, you cannot. But I do try to give as much information, you know, as I can. And I did like a Q&A on Instagram, so I got a lot of good questions. But yeah, that was one of them was the, um, she wanted to know, she still had some weight to lose and wanted to know if she should hold off on, um, starting weight training until she lost all her weight. No, that's the best. No, weight training is going to help you get Actually, your goals be best. faster. Yeah, it speeds up your metabolism, builds lean muscle it tissue. It speeds up your... Not only does weight training... Obviously, it's... The actual session itself is going to burn additional calories that day, right? So that that's number one. Yeah. So even before you start building muscle, just the process of doing the workout is going to burn more calories. So mm -hmm. now you've increased your calorie burn without... You've increased your deficit without dropping what you eat, like we were saying. Yep. But then you're going to be slowly putting on that lean muscle. And the more muscle you have on your body, the more calories your body needs in order to function. That What does that mean? That means faster metabolism. It means your body requires more fuel to function. Yep. That's why you can eat double what I can eat. Yes. Because you have a lot more muscle on your body. That's why men can eat more than women. People wonder about that. Like, God, why can my boyfriend eat so much more? Because he has more muscle than you. This is where women make the mistake of uh, they blow the F up because you guys can't eat the same volume as men. When you're out to order the same exact meal, eating toe to toe, tit for tat, forget about it. We'll get yeah. away with it. Because if, if I sit down here, do nothing all day, just sit in this chair and do nothing. And you sit in that chair and do nothing. Because of the muscle that you have in your body, you are going to burn probably like just doing nothing like 2,200 calories. Just doing nothing. And I'm probably going to burn about 1,200 calories just doing nothing. That's 1,000 calories more just because you have, obviously because... Your vessel is larger. That's also, what it is. Keep My in vessel mind, is larger. Your your vessel. People don't look at that either. No, so like it's like true. a little car takes less gas, yes. right? Than than a truck. So if the the larger your vessel, the the more calorie burn you have. That's why even even and that includes even if you're if it's fat. So even like someone who's larger, they have a you know they burn more calories, mm -hmm. and as you lose weight, people go, oh my metabolism is slowing down. Well. It's, it's slowing down because you're becoming a smaller person. Your yeah. vessel is smaller. So, yes, yes your metabolism adjusts accordingly. Mm -hmm. But how you can counter that and have a small vessel but still eat like you had a large vessel is by having more muscle on your body. And that's why, listen, I love food. I don't make any, you know, like qualms about it. Like, I love food. And that's why a lot of my motivation for putting on more muscle is, yes, I want to look good and I like I love the look of a muscular body, but I also want to be able to consume more food and still look and not, feel my not best. A bad trade off, I honestly. No, so I want to put on muscle, and I know. I wonder well, how is that possible? She's going to eat more, put on more muscle. So explain to them what you mean by that. What do you mean? Like you're putting on muscle by eating more. People don't realize you can. No, eat more. I mean I'm. I want to. I I don't understand what you're saying. I didn't say that. I said what I want to be able to eat more. more. So I'm putting on You're muscle. Putting on muscle. I'm making it a goal of mine to put on muscle so that my vessel requires more calories in order to keep it. So when I'm sitting here, I'm not going to burn 1,200. Maybe I'm going to burn 1,600 by doing nothing because now I have more muscle on my body. Mm -hmm. So if I'm stripping away the fat but replacing it with muscle, even though my vessel, my body's getting smaller, I'm going to upregulate my metabolism by putting on more muscle. So I'm going to kind of like negate that difference instead of my metabolism getting slower and slower. Instead of the smaller I get, now my BMR is at 1,200. Now it's at 1,100. Now it's at 1,000 calories. It only takes, you know, I'm so tiny. It only takes me 1,000 calories to survive. It takes my body, you know, 1,000 calories. No, I don't want to do that. I want to increase it. And the only yeah. way to do that is by putting more muscle on your body. True. Hence, that's why bodybuilders, powerlifters, they require so many calories. That's why they require Big time. Because oh, otherwise, right. what'll happen? So they then, can, obviously, like I don't have this problem. But if you are someone who has put on so much muscle on your body, not only will, and if you're not able to eat enough to sustain that muscle, your body will just get rid of the muscle. You'll start burning through it.
It's true. So that's what happens if like a bodybuilder, if they don't eat enough, they, um, they start getting smaller quick. They can't keep up with the protein with protein requirements. You see them start shriveling down. Yeah, Paulo looks like he's struggling over there. Um, yeah, so they can't like I I I know that even even some girls like competitors or figure competitors or they can eat like five thousand calories a day. That's insane. They have so I, much muscle. I can't even eat that. And they're tiny. They're small, but they have a lot of muscle. That's crazy that they could eat that much. That, that's almost un, unheard of, unreal, but hey, they have that kind of muscle and they're lean and their bodies weren't using it up and, yeah. and it's working for them. Exactly. That's crazy though. Yeah. That's the science now. People have and nailed it. Yeah. I mean, just like your body can downregulate, it can upregulate too. Sure. It could go in both directions and it doesn't mean... You know, a lot of times people will say metabolic damage, and I've said the word metabolic damage because some people have damaged their metabolism because they went too extreme. But when people go on a diet, like or a deficit, or eat a de or lose weight, and then they gain it back really quickly, and they say like, "Oh, it's because I I ruined my metabolism," or they'll blame their coach or their trainer. Oh, they ruined my metabolism because now you know I. I gained all my weight back and I didn't even eat that much more. Well, it's because you went on a diet, quote unquote, and then you went off the diet. Yes, when you lost weight and you got smaller, your metabolism slowed down because like I said, you have a smaller body. So you less fuel. Smaller. Less fuel. Less. It's like if you, like I said, if you get a commuter car, why do you get a commuter car? Because it's little, it's going to be better on gas. Yes. Well, your body's better on gas when you when you lost a bunch of, if you lost 30 pounds, your body's going to down-regulate. Yeah, it's not going to take the same amount of calories. No, and so there's a few ways to counter it. You know, you can be, be a little bit careful and do like a reverse diet so you don't go right back up to maintenance calories because your body will recognize that as a surplus. You slowly, you know, increase your calories. Yeah, so yeah. kind of like sneak them in to your body so that it doesn't, you know, like freak out. So it's adapting. Yeah. Slowly. Slowly. So yeah. you, you kind of like slowly increase it, maybe add an extra refeed day or slowly increase your calories or increase your cheat day calories, whatever, whatever you like best. Um, but then you can also counter it again by really focusing on putting on muscle. Mm -hmm. And you do that by obviously resistance training, real focused good uh, resistance training programs. Like really pay attention. Don't just go through the motions because then you're no. just burning calories. There's a difference between working out to burn calories and working out to build muscle. Big time. Two different things. Two different things. And when you're working out to burn calories, you're just moving. You're just moving the weights, you're moving around, walking around the gym, yep. whatever. You're, you're a little lost. You're in just that. like... You don't know what you're doing. Okay, no plan, if, no rhyme or reason. No, you're just kind One of like... Machine going to the machine, the like, and you're not paying attention to what muscle you're working out. Yes. You're just kind of moving. Now, is that worthless? No, because you're burning calories, so it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is weight loss and or not to gain weight, I mean, the burned calories are helpful, yes. Yes, of course. But for putting on muscle, you have to kind of know what muscle that you are working out at that moment. So like if you're doing a bicep curl, you're not thinking about your calves. Yep. Okay, you're not like flexing your calves when you're doing the bicep curl, no. You're thinking, okay, I'm lifting this weight, I'm, I'm putting tension in my bicep, I'm feeling constant tension. Mm -hmm. You wanna feel it. You wanna say like, am I giving my bicep the message that what it's doing is difficult? So you're sending the message for the bicep to grow to make this task less difficult. Yeah. That's really what you're doing. So when your body, when your muscles grow, it's because your body has identified that you are doing something that is difficult and it wants to make it less difficult. So it makes it bigger. I'm like, well, the next time she lifts that 10 pounds, I'm gonna be a little bit bigger, it's gonna be a little bit easier. And you just keep doing that. And so you gotta tell yourself when you're working out, do you feel it in that muscle that you're supposed to be feeling it yep. in? And is it enough to tell your body to grow the muscle so that it gets easier next time? And then will it get easier? No, because you'll adjust. You'll maybe lift a little heavier, maybe do more reps because you don't want it to get easier because you want your body to continue to grow the muscle. Got to press that, uh, you got to push that uh, stress on the muscle, always got to. 
If you don't, it ain't going to grow. No, it's just... If you go in there, like, I see people playing around, and I get it. Some people are lost. They don't know. Partially, I always blame the gym. Like, listen, you should always give at least people two two introductory sessions just to show people how to, what they're doing. And just the thought process. I think just that that mind and muscle connection, people don't realize how important it is to growing the muscle. Mm -hmm. So even... Like you guys. You gotta manifest it. So I, you don't I have to have it. a trainer, okay? You can, if you go to the gym, there's instructions on every machine. Read the instructions on the machine and look at the diagram that shows what muscle you should be feeling it in. Because you might not know. You might walk up to a machine, you know, you're brand new to going to the gym. You might not know exactly where you should be feeling it. So you'll look at the, the machine. It'll show you where you should be feeling it. And then that's, You'll want to think about that area of your body when you're performing the exercise and make sure you feel it yep. and make sure it's hard because if it's not hard. So it's called, instead of, don't call it lifting, but the, the thing is lifting weights. It's lifting resistance weights. training. It's resistance training. Resisting the weights. Feel the resistance. Yes, feel the yeah. resistance. Why does it feel this way? Why is it hard? What am I working? Yeah, I mean, it should get to the point where it's burning. It's burning. It's the last sensation. three reps should be like a burning sensation. It should work for it. Not finish. Okay, I got five left. And I'm yeah, and, that's, and then obviously diet plays plays into it. You got to be that's making sure factor. that you are eating enough protein. Because basically what happens is the muscle, when you're, when you're feeling that burn and that pain in your muscle, it's literally the, the um, muscle fibers are like ripping apart. Like they're like opening Micro, up. Microscopically, yes. Yeah, they're like they're, they're tearing, like um, they're little little injuries. Little injuries. That's why it's like it causes inflammation yep. and swelling sometimes. It's because it's basically little injuries. Mm -hmm. But when the muscles come back together and repair, it, it's that, proteins and amino proteins, acids yes. that that help with that repair. And guess what? They'll repair a little bigger next time. Mm -hmm. So if the they're cells. like yeah, they're if they're together tightly and they rip open when they come back together they'll come back together a little bit bigger yep. ever so slightly but over time those gains you know become more obvious over mm -hmm. you know and it takes a, a significant amount of time to put on muscle it's a lot of consistency dedication in the gym to put on actual size yep your body adapts quick yeah that's the problem you'll, you'll adapt so fast your workouts your body will be used to your your workouts within six weeks people say oh now it's a, if you don't have to, and you don't have to feel soreness so that's a myth you do not I have know. to feel soreness after the fact in order to make for that workout to have been affected that's crazy because i always thought you used to when i did nope. like, damn it man that's just lactic acid. acid yeah i know so in order for the workout to be effective for you to know it's effective you just have to know that those last three reps feet are difficult and you're feeling the burn, almost the pull, the mm -hmm. pull, the burn in mm -hmm. your muscle. Yep. You should not be happy about it. It should be difficult. You should want to like grunt or howl, even though really you're not really necessarily good. going to be doing that out loud and being that annoying person in the gym. If you're not feeling that pain, you're not working hard enough up your weight a little bit or concentrate on the muscle make maybe up your reps a little bit but you should really be feeling it and i think most people don't realize what they should be feeling i don't think they're, they're they don't working hard enough mm -hmm. because just because sometimes they haven't stopped to think about it if, if, if sometimes if you just stop to think about what you're trying to do send that message to your body telling your body it needs to grow in order to sustain this weight, um, you know, so you have to think about that. But that's why I take a supplement called creatine. Actually, we were talking about that earlier. Is that supplement creatine really helps? Um, it, it helps to convert your energy quickly in the gym, and it increases your strength, like in the gym. So it helps you push a little harder and get that extra burn. Because that's, it's, that's what it's about. When it comes to growth and growing your muscles, which that's what we're trying to do, right? Trying to grow your muscles is I like to take supplements that are going to help me have a more effective workout. And creatine has a lot of studies that back it up. I was I was talking to Tyler about it, actually. He's like, yeah, it's one of the like most underrated supplements. Been around, too, for a minute. Um, and it's the most science-backed, proven 
proven. And, it, like, and it, even, it even survived through the 90s because it was around back yeah. then in the 90s. Well, some people think like, it, they think, like, is it creatine steroids? Because it got a reputation know. because it makes you stronger. It does. It makes True. you stronger in the gym. True. And you don't have to take it when you're working out. It's not one of those supplements. It's something that you just get into your body and, and take it all the time. You can take it anytime. I just take five grams every day. I put it in water. Um, I just add it to my BCAAs. I actually just started, um, I just ordered a supplement from um, InnoSups that's called Max Strength. And it's like a BCAA and creatine in one. So that way I condense two supplements into one. Oh, nice. Um, so I'm going to be trying that one out to see how I like it. But, but yeah, so that's why I like to take those kind of things that I can tell impact my ability to have a more effective workout you gotta have to kind of like when you're doing weight training you have to clear your head you do and you don't have to think about remember it why you're life. there yeah you're you're in there to grow your muscles no personal life no life problems that's gonna be there when you leave that gym it's because you know away. what you get a good workout in while you're in like focus I, like we're talking about time management it doesn't take that long you can have a very effective 30 minute weight training workout. Man, you can set up four different stations and just go. Very, very effective. I, uh, someone asked me very on Instagram, quick. like, how much do you work out? I mean, I've put on a good amount of muscle, I would say, over the last six months. Probably a good, solid, like, three pounds of muscle. Um, it doesn't sound like much, but that's hard to do. It's hard to Especially do. Especially for a middle aged woman. Middle aged? I feel like I'm above middle aged. Mm. Sure, I'm almost senior, 45 years old. But, um,. I only do 40, about 40 minutes, four days a week of weight training, but it's very, like, but it's not, you're not looking not at on my phone. For five minutes. Nope. I'm not on my phone. I'm just working. boom, 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 getting it done. So it's, that's not a lot of time when you're thinking about time blocks and time management, 40 minutes. I could be like, man, I'm so busy today. I probably should skip that 40 minute workout, but what can I really, 40 minutes is not that long. Just get it done. Like Quick. you could get it done. You could, you could squeeze it in, mm -hmm. you know? And even if you're not, um, like for me, I like to save time by working out at home. You know, if that helps get some, get some equipment at home, go, go on Amazon and get some like dumbbells, a good dumbbell set. And you can do a very effective workout bands, bands. and dumbbells. You don't need to have a fancy schmancy home gym. No, you really don't No. the new program <clears throat> that I'm launching. You have to be motivated though. I'm launching a, you know, obviously I've talked about it. I'm launching a new program um, July 1st. It's going to be really, uh, the workout's going to be a lot better and more pro progressive workouts. Very easy to follow, but um, home options for someone who, you know, doesn't want to work out at a gym nice. or doesn't have a lot of time. Yep. There's going to be home and gym options, and it'll tell you exactly what to do every day. Like, okay, open up the app. Okay, what do I do today? Boom, 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 done. You That's check it. it off your list, done. Move yeah. on to the next day and it'll tell you exactly what to do so you don't have to waste any time roaming around or trying to figure out what you need to do. Just, I like to, I like to be efficient and get it done and have it, because otherwise if you don't know exactly what you're gonna do, you could waste 15, 20, 30 minutes just kind of like trying to figure that out. I know. And time. I have a game plan already. Time is money. It is. Time is it's the most valuable asset. You know is. why? You can never get it back. It is, and that's why I no one can get like, it back. I'm like so um, excited about this new my new system because it's it's making things just so much more easy easier for me to get things done and to like make all of, accomplish all of these goals and get like all of this stuff done. And, of course. Be better at my job you yep. know be better a better coach to my clients because now i'm so much more efficient with even how i coach them and and answer questions for them and create content for them you know mm -hmm. because that's my goal is i'm always thinking about ways to make it easier videos i can show hacks i can do to make this whole process just easier for simplify them. it yeah not so complicated it's too much information out there sometimes too much sensory overload yeah. People get overwhelmed. They're like, ah, I'm not going to do it. Forget this. It's too much. Well, I know. That's why my whole program is all around taking it, scaling it back, like making it even more simple because you don't have to, it doesn't have to be complicated. No. It can be more simplified and, and the simpler it is, it's just like, get it done, Same. mark it off your list, move on to the next thing. That's it. Just like I, 
recently was, um, I, I did a post on Instagram recently and it talked about just keep going, trust the process, get it done, do what you're supposed to do until the results become undeniable. So yeah, don't sure. always, don't look every step of the way to see like, oh, I want to see change. I want to see change. Just get your head down, That's it. get it done, open the app, get that thing done. And then one day you're going to look in the mirror and the results are undeniable. Yep. Then let that, that's going to be where the real motivation kicks in because you realize like, wow, I don't have to like look with a microscope to see the results. They're undeniable. Then your motivation's at an all time high. Mm -hmm. Let your motivation then keep, help you keep going. Yep. That's, that's, that's the goal. So head down, trust the process. Go until those results are undeniable. Then let that motivation take you even that much further. That's true. Don't stop. Yeah, don't stop because, yeah, you're only just beginning once you get to that point. That's true. That's what people get there and they're like, damn, life changing. And they boom, they, yeah. they, they, I don't yeah. know, they jump off the bridge. And no, then... you got to keep going forever, forever because this is a forever thing. Forever, ever, ever. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.